A welcome to How We Sold It, the video series where we show you how we, the Eves Realty Group, sold properties that other companies could not. Hi, my name is Thomas Eves. I'm the lead agent of the Eves Realty Group at Keller Williams Realty. And today we're looking at this property here at 2600 Welty Street in McKinney, Texas. Now, whenever we see a property come off the market, either canceled, expired, what have you, we're usually looking at four different areas uh, right off the bat to see if there were uh, any, uh, any opportunities for uh, improved marketing. And those areas are pricing, strategy, photo strategy, property description, and ease of showings. And whenever we looked at this property, we were able to pretty quickly identify uh, three different opportunities uh, that uh, we would have done differently to improve the marketing of this property and ultimately get into contract. And actually, that's exactly what we did. Uh, this property was on market with the previous company for 130 days. We at the Eves Realty Group had this property in contract in only 37 days. So let's identify some of the, uh, the opportunities that I mentioned earlier and uh, talk about how we fix those. So uh, the first thing we were looking at is the pricing strategy. Sellers normally hear us talk about pricing strategy and they always think, oh, he's just trying to get me to reduce my price. And sometimes that's not the case at all. And in fact, in this situation, that wasn't exactly what happened. So you can see that originally the uh, list price of this property was $1.05 million. Then ultimately after some time, they did a price reduction down to $999,999. So um, this is an area of opportunity that, that is really, really easy to, to, to to jump on and say, hey, I, I can see the problem and I can vastly improve your um your exposure to the market, at least digitally, just by fixing this number right here. If you were to go with me on this little journey and go and look at something like Zillow, okay? Zillow's got a whole lot of market share. Homes.com is another uh, company that's actually taking a lot of Zillow's market share in the home search uh, field right now. But just imagine, you know, let's go to Zillow and let's go into the buy area here. This is set up for Fairview, Texas, but it doesn't really matter. Um, we'll just go over here to where it says price. You'll notice whenever I click on price, it brings up these drop down menus for selecting a minimum and a maximum price. Okay, so I can select a minimum price. And let's just say that I know that in uh, Collin County, the, the caliber of property that I'm looking for is not going to be below a million dollars, right? So I select a million dollars up to, I don't know, 1.5, right? That's my budget, okay? Now here's the problem. Just imagine for a second that this property at 2600 Welty Street, which ultimately ended up priced at $999,999, is perfect for me. Well, the problem is that via the search that I set up real quickly there on Zillow, I'll never see it. I'll never see it because it missed me by a dollar. If it had been priced a dollar higher, I, the purchaser who had a million dollar budget in Collin County, would have seen it. But because it was a dollar lower, I didn't see it. So you can see how that was kind of a problem. Priced at $1.05 million, it was the exact same problem. It was just on the other side, right? So at $999,000, you know, let's just say that this, this here, my vertical hand here is a million dollars, okay? So coming up to a million, right? Everybody can see it over here, priced at $999,999, but no one beyond it can see it. And then over here at $1.05 million, everyone looking from a million and up can see it but nobody down. And so, you know, if you, you just imagine there's a hundred buyers, let's say, looking over here from a million and up, and there's a hundred buyers looking up to a million. Well, there's only one price point that gets 200 buyers simultaneously. Well, what is it? It's a million dollars. So what do you think our suggested price was for the seller? I was like, hey, actually, I think you should increase the price by a whole dollar. So um, that was the first area that we identified. We knew we could maximize exposure by simply chasing, changing the price. And so that's why it's so important to talk about pricing strategy instead of just saying, uh, we, we've got to improve the price. We've got to price it within the comps, right? That's not always the best solution. You should probably be priced somewhere within the comps, assuming there are comps. Uh, and yet pricing strategy is so much important because exposing the property is, is the most important thing to marketing a piece of real estate. If it's not in front of enough eyes and ultimately if it's not in front of the person who's probably going to buy it, it doesn't really matter, right? You're just talking in an empty room. So the next thing we identified with this property is we went through and we looked at the photos and we noticed that the... Um, there, there were there were two problems. One was the arrangement of the photos. We've got data that goes back to the early 2000s that demonstrates that buyers who look for properties online only look at three to four photos before they decide whether or not they're interested and they're going to keep looking. OK, so three to four photos is the entire opportunity that we have. Just imagine it like that's your first date. Right. So we have uh, our, our first date opportunity. It's three to four photos. Um, well, here's the other thing is that if you have ever watched HGTV a day in your life, you know that the two rooms that sell houses are the kitchen and the master bathroom. Right. So 
I go through four photos here. Here's photo one, here's photo two, here's photo three, here's photo four. Not only did we not see the kitchen and the master bathroom, but we never even got in the house. So the arrangement of the photos uh, we, we identified as an opportunity. The other thing, though, is when we we scrolled and we finally got into the house, you know, this house was still at this time occupied by the sellers. And the sellers lived in this house like you live in a house, right? It's their stuff and it's arranged the way that they liked it uh, and the way that worked best for, for their family and for their situation. The problem was that we noticed that the furniture and the way that it was arranged, uh, the style, the, the decor didn't necessarily match the people that were moving to the neighborhood, one, and it also didn't quite match the functionality of the house. And that's not to say it's not beautiful furniture. It is. It just wasn't arranged in the way that we uh, would stage a property to sell, right? The way that we photograph versus the way that we stage versus the way that we show versus the way that we live are four vastly different types of staging, okay? And it's not meant to be offensive. It just it just is. It just is naturally, right? So we identified that we wanted to uh, rearrange the staging. Now, at this point, what we didn't know is that the seller had actually moved out out of the house. So it was completely vacant. And so we brought in our stagers. And by the way, we brought in our stagers at our expense. There's very few real estate companies that bring in a stager at their expense. They will bring in a stager and recommend that their seller pay for it. Sometimes real estate companies will pay for the staging, but they uh, expect to be paid back by the seller at the closing table. We did not do that. We considered it at the cost of doing business. And, um, and, you know, I, I don't regret it at all. I think that our staging came out beautifully. And I'll show you some examples of that in just a moment. Um, so that that was kind of the uh, the the three things that we went through uh, that we discovered were uh, kind of the, the opportunities for, for better marketing for this property. So uh, let's kind of uh, just have a look at, at what we did. So you'll notice that we had the property priced at one million dollars. OK. And uh, the photos that we have here, uh, we actually changed the front photo a couple of times. We tested the market to see what was getting the most exposure. And I think this is the one that worked out the best. It really demonstrated the property was a corner lot. We always love to show the curb appeal, uh, but it also demonstrated one of the best lot premiums of this lot. This particular neighborhood in Tucker Hill and McKinney doesn't have huge lots. Um, and, and even if the lot is huge, the footprint of the house is, is just as big. Uh, and so... Uh, you, you have a lot more opportunity. You have a lot more yard space. It is a lot premium to be on a corner. And so we wanted to uh, have a photo that highlighted that. So we chose this as our front photo. The second photo we chose as one of the other major selling features of the house, which was this beautiful outdoor living area that faces out toward the street. So, um, you know, and, and people love this. It was a very neighborly vibe. There's uh, uh, kids playing uh, ball out in the streets. So it was a it was a really, really cool um uh, effect that we did here. The decorative fire that our professional photographer put in place there uh, was very, very cool. And so the third photo is one of the rooms that sells the house. It was the kitchen, appropriately staged. Uh, and then finally, photo four was, guess what? The master bathroom, right? So the two rooms that sold the houses were within the first three to four photos. So it's just something that people don't think about very often. When they think about the arrangement of photos, they go, okay, well, I guess I would do all the front exteriors first. And then I guess I would do the front door and then maybe the back of the front door and then I would show kind of the way that you walk through the house. I understand the intuition there. It's just not the actual way that the marketing of real estate works in the mind of the consumer, right? And so when you know the other side of it, it's really obvious how to arrange them and how not to arrange them. Let's just keep going through the photos here because I'd like to show off the rest of this house. So we went ahead and completed the master suite there and then we went back into the main area of the house showing off the kitchen and how it um, how it moves here into the um, into the living area back into the kitchen. And so you can see we just did some, uh, we added some some tchotchkes uh, to, the, uh, to the kitchen to really make it uh, look lived in. The living area has um, a more appropriate size furniture, but also lighter furniture, lighter both in, in texture and in weight, uh, but it, as well, it, it wasn't as dark uh, as, the, um, uh, as the previous furniture, which made the living room feel a little bit more closed in. Got the magazine style photos here. The master bedroom, we specifically had our photographer highlight that there is a door that opens out to that beautiful living area, uh, the uh, outdoor living area. So we really wanted to highlight that. So we've got this great light, airy furniture, uh, and we're demonstrating that the, the, the feature of the master ensuite, which is that it goes out to the um, out to the outdoor living area. The stage dining room here. 
So here at the end of the uh, of our photo chain here, photo 40 of 40, you'll notice that we have the amenities center. Uh, one of the big selling points for these neighborhoods is the amenities that are offered by the neighborhood. You're, you're paying an HOA due to be in most of these nicer neighborhoods in Collin County. So what are you getting for it? And so we wanted to make sure to demonstrate those things as well. So I just want to point out that, you know, this is the first step to getting a property exposed. Now, once we've got it marketed and we've got the property uh, in front of the people who are probably going to buy it, uh, the idea there is to make showings really, really easy and convenient. Uh, and, you know, one of the uh, additional services that we provided to the seller is we would go out to the property anytime a showing was scheduled and we would turn on the lights and we would make sure that it was cool and it smelled good uh, and everything was put into place. Uh, all the lamps are on, you know, we even turn the oven lights on. We really want to make it look like everything there's no dark corners in the house uh, everything looks very very uh, comfortable and cozy and safe we even made um uh, scent recommendations to our sellers on what type of scents make people feel more at home. So, um, you know, once we coordinated uh, several showings, broker open houses, and I think uh, probably six or seven uh, actual uh, public open houses, we were able to get this property into contract, a uh, contract that our uh, sellers were very satisfied with, and uh, it closed without much drama. And so uh, that is how we sold it. If we can help you achieve similar results, then please, by all means, reach out to us. We're at evesrealtygroup.com, or you can call Call us at 940-252-1404. Thanks so much for watching this edition of How We Sold It. We'll talk to you again soon.